Okay, here we are at our September Barb and Gabby camp out. We're at Bumping Lake, a few miles from the lake, and we are on our first day after our first night here. Everybody's going to make a report. There were a few of us who were here on Tuesday night, so we have a few things that we might catch up on from before that. But we're going to go around the group here, and, and everybody's going to talk about what they've experienced so far. So sitting directly to my left, who would like to remain off camera, we have Yvonne. And she was with us in May. You'll, you'll probably recognize her voice. Um, go ahead and tell us what, uh, what you've experienced. Um, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I needed to go for a wee. I needed to urinate, in case you don't understand what a wee is. <laughs> <laughs> and I was walking down the hill. Hill. And I, hill. <laughs> And I actually stumbled on a large rock and I think I made that oh noise. And just as I made that noise, I heard oh <laughs> and I looked up and there was two red eyes staring at me. From how far away? The distance of that wood pile. And maybe a little bit further. So Twenty feet maybe. Yeah. So uh, I put both my hands up in the air. And I said, sorry, just going to wee. <laughs> <laughs> and my heart was racing. And I just couldn't break eye contact. I just kept on looking and kept on looking back. And I said, I don't mean you any harm. <laughs> know that I could harm it, but... And I know you don't mean me any harm. But I didn't know what to do. And I was like sort of telling myself off in my head for being so scared because I've came all this way. You know, I flew for 14 hours <laughs> to see one. And when I see one, I'm going to run away. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So, hit moved from the left to the right. And the way it, it kept on looking at me whilst it moved, but it was as if it just vanished. But in the daylight, when I've looked, it's actually went behind Barbara's black car. And that's how it went for me seeing red eyes to seeing nothing. In the pitch black, okay. it, it just seemed to disappear. And I walked backwards and said, I'm going back to my tent. I don't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> and then sat in my tent, peeking through a little space <laughs> in the tent. And I thought, if it passes by the tent, I'll see its shadow because the light was coming through the cloth of the tent. And just as I thought that, it went dark from left to right, right across my tent. And I thought, why did you think that? You thought it and then it happened. <laughs> and to my left, I heard what sounded like a, tur a, a turkey. Like the bird. gobble? Like, yeah. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And right after that, I thought it's heading to Penny and Patricia's because I heard them talking. And I couldn't wait till this morning to find out if they'd heard anything. So about what time was this? Do you have any idea? I've no idea. I was, I was sitting praying for the light to come because I was still needing a wee <laughs> and was scared to leave my tent. <laughs> okay. And I was praying for daylight. Okay. But... I think I, I finally, I heard a car door shut and I thought, someone's awake <laughs> and I needed human company. So I was brave enough to come down at the campfire, but no one woke up for another hour at least. Okay. So I sat here in the dark myself saying, enough excitement for one night. <laughs> <laughs> so you never went back to sleep after that? No. No? Okay. And I may not for a few nights. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how big were the eyes? I didn't really notice. I was just in shock. Okay. I mean, I was looking at, because I'd stumbled on the rock, I was looking at my feet. I only looked up because of the growl. Does anybody have any questions for Yvonne? About how, how tall? tall? I said it wasn't much bigger than me, but I was at the sort of top, just as the road dips down. And when Peter went and stood in the same place, I said, no, actually it was taller than you. How tall is Peter? Six foot five. Okay. 
so that makes me even more scared because I, <laughs> I thought it was a juvenile. <laughs> well, it may have been. A, just a really tall, big one. A very well-fed juvenile. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> if, it, if it hadn't made the sound, though, it was so black. It was really only the eyes I could see. And they didn't, take, they didn't turn away from me. They just kept on staring right at me. Yeah. If it if it shut its eyes and just stood there, I would have walked right past. Yeah. It was the growl that made me go, <laughs> you know, like, my God. Yeah. <laughs> What do yeah, you I do? Think it was meant to happen. Yeah, yeah, I had been asking. I won't be scared this time, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I think the time frame we kind of figured out, you said it was raining around 12 15, 12 30. Yeah. And I got up around 5. You'd already been up at the fire for about an hour. Until about an hour, so that'd be 4. Half 3. So somewhere after the rain. It was right before the, the turkey noise, and then you speaking. Yes. Because I went, as I saw the shadow past the tent, I heard your voices and I thought, well, someone's awake. I was, so, I just wanted company. I just wanted a human. <laughs> I, I just felt very alone in my little she tent. She me halfway <laughs> to my car. But I was too, too yeah. scared to come near you. And then when I heard the turkey noise, I thought, oh, no, it's went up there. <laughs> so did you hear that noise about... She thinks yes. she maybe hasn't taken But... I'm thinking that the turkey noise that she heard is a different sound that I heard is an elk sound that Barb heard. Yeah. We all heard it in three different ways in our head, mm. but it was definitely the same thing, and it was very loud and crisp. I just yeah. heard the noise. And I did two very sharp, real loud, and in the quiet of the night, it, it, it was, was loud. The did clapping you hear that? was loud. And I, I began I just, to speak. I just heard the a noise and then I heard talking. Yeah, that was us. And I, I was like, yeah. oh, they're awake. See, to but me I it was, sounded just like an elk. To go. Yeah, yeah. like that, uh, the cow, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. I, and I have no experience with elk sounds, so I couldn't tell you what it was, but it just, you know, it was like, okay, it's close. I'd say it was within 25 yards of the back of our area. And we're purposely 300 feet away so that we can kind of get some activity, but be careful what you ask for. Yeah. It's a very busy night. Well, we don't have a lot of elk or turkeys in Glasgow, <laughs> unless it's Christmas Day and it's on your plate. <laughs> they don't make a lot of noise. <laughs> so I'm not really great at identifying mm -hmm. those sort of noises. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sandy, did you hear, see anything? Um, the only thing I heard during the night was uh, a very long, mournful howl, and it was very long and, and mournful. It, it sounded like um, a male's, just kind of, it was a very long, drawn-out call of okay. some sort. It was after the rain. I remember waking up to the rain going, oh great, it's raining. We all know I love that. On a camp out, <laughs> so um, my yeah, and it was it was extremely long, which kind of caught me because of just the length of it, the breath. Okay. Of this long, and about it was that close, distant. To me, it sounded like it was behind me in that direction, back towards you guys somewhere. Okay. Um, and I'm right over here, so it would have been back that way. Okay. Yeah, towards you guys, past Tom, back there. It was back in the forest. Okay. So I heard that. There was a little bit of rustling around behind me, but nothing that I could really put my finger on. My head was up against the, I have the little tent. So it was up against the um, tent wall, and I was like, oh, no, 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 right back corner. No. Mm -mm. So I scooted over <laughs> just in case. I didn't want somebody to come along and smack me on the head <laughs> like I've heard they will do. I was like, oh, no, we're not doing that tonight. Okay. <laughs> so that's all I heard last night. Cool. Okay. And then when I woke up, well, I had heard the fire popping, so I knew you were up already because nobody else gets up earlier than me. So then I was like, oh, Yvonne's up. So then I thought, well, hmm. So then when I came out. I said, I need a cuddle. She came. <laughs> she met me. She saw my light come on, and she was already on my way to, on her way to my tent. And she goes, do you need a cuddle? And I was like. 
Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I said, then, I need a cuddle. Oh, you need a cuddle. I need a cuddle. And then I just we like, cried, and then eat. she told me she, what she, had happened. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you do need a cuddle. Come here. <laughs> I was so nearly crying. So then we just came back and, t- yeah. I was she shaking was really my shaking. whole body. was shaking. She was shaking. Huh? Her little hand Your, your Fred shaking. face is getting a little patched, you know, red, yeah, red. and white thinking about yeah. it. I was even, like, I was using my, my torch every time I went over to get wood for the fire in case he would behind the boots. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know. I'm yeah. not ready for any more excitement. And she talked about how much safer she felt around the fire. Like, Even though almost just, in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, and it's true. When you though you hear stuff around you, you build up the fire. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a... But it's like, you know, like... will stay away, right? 14 yeah. hour flight. Please let me see a Bigfoot. Please let me see a Bigfoot. Yeah. Please let me... Oh, no! <laughs> I, I saw a Bigfoot. <laughs> Can I put my tent next to your tent? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's move on to Rob. Did Have you experienced anything since you've been here? Nothing that would make any sense. The only thing I experienced was some noise, and it ended up being Peter shuffling stuff around in his truck. So that's all I, I'm, other than the same stuff everybody else is going to tell you that they heard, I, I heard a, some of that, but not all of it. Okay. So, and I even sat behind my truck for a little bit for about 45 minutes after everybody went to bed, way back down there looking for eye shine and <laughs> looking for UFOs too. <laughs> don't see no shine. But uh, I didn't see anything. Okay. Of note. All right, Claire. Oh, wow. Did you experience well, just, anything? You know, I I didn't other than her waking me up saying, Claire, <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> no, I was asleep. <laughs> um, and it ha- was it before the rain? Yeah. It must be before the rain because after the rain I slept, which is really weird for me to sleep so soundly. Um, but yeah, she. I'll let her tell it because I I didn't hear it. We we stopped and we listened for quite a while. And we did hear footsteps, and then we listened to see if it was another camper, and we didn't hear anybody. So we did hear footsteps, but that's about it. And okay. She, Kelly? Yeah, well, it wasn't so much footsteps, but like rustling. There was like a lot of rustling and underfoot crunching and stuff like that. And I was just, and she was asleep, and I was like laying there. And then, like Vaughn, I was like all of a sudden horrified for some reason, but I'm like, and then I and then it was like I was up against the tent and I, it was like uh, like it would be like a nose up against the tent going and I thought it was the dog I, and I'm like Claire Claire <laughs> Claire and I put her against the wall on purpose and I'm shoving See? her the wall <laughs> but again you know I don't want to jump to conclusions but but I didn't hear anybody talking or anything like that and I, I thought it could be the dog smelling me i don't know but well, besides her, her, that the, the bottom of the zipper on the tent was open so she could get yeah. out but because that's what it she s- and felt when like, i went so. to sleep was when it was started raining and up to that point gabby was uh bundled up on her bed snoring this yeah so the rain. yeah it was yeah. just before the rain, the rain. So. oh yes okay so it was, was it? not gabby okay okay because <laughs> I, I thought maybe it was because you know like you could feel like the no like an impression of a nose up against a tent you know like it was touching you that's what I felt but um, but it wasn't enough to like freak me out or anything I just thought oh you know you kind of think what could it be could it like I thought I thought maybe it was Gabby but besides that um, I did also see red eyes staring at me but then it was just Claire so and David, you just arrived, so... I just arrived. I didn't see or hear anything. I just feel jealous. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous, too. <laughs> Nancy, anything? I didn't hear... I, I, I was really tired, and I slept really soundly, so I didn't hear anything. Okay. All right, Penny and Pat. Um, I'll let Pat do the setup stuff that we did. Okay, well, we got here rather late yesterday, so before dark, uh, we were stringing up a trip line around our perimeter and we're about 300 yards up the road because we want to be back in the boonies for an experience and um, we had some black thread and we strung it in six foot sections around us this way and just one opening for us to get to the truck and this morning Penny went out and checked it and three of them were broken and they were up about five feet high Hmm. five foot level 
and we did not see any elk tracks or anything around. You know how they have those deep hoofs and everything. And since it rained, you'd think you would see them. Yeah. We walked down the road, Penny and I, last night when it was dark, and we found a spot or a bank where it looked like there had been a deer trail. So we walked up there, and there was a log. Penny stood on the log and got up there and hung it from a string that we had put up in the air about five or six feet up in the air, I guess. Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, and it had a pie in it, peanut butter, some crackers, honey. Uh, I can't remember what else. A uh, jar, mason jar of something. Mason jar with the crackers in it, and there was also some raw carrots, because she said they... A couple apples. A couple apples. We had quite a bit of food. So we left that there, and we also did put a recorder down there okay. on, a tree, on a stump and hid that. And uh, up, so we can go back this morning and check it. We haven't. You haven't looked yet. Haven't looked um, yet. The the stuff that I have to report is the total lack of anybody reporting all of this ambient noise last night. It was just racket filled. For a girl from Alaska, our woods are quiet. If you hear a moose coming through, that's something. But this place was lit up I like a Saturn rocket. There was elk bugling. There was hoo 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 yeah. cooks for you going off like crazy. <laughs> there was little yip yips. I thought we had heard while we were sitting at the campfire last night, almost like a yote, a coyote kind of yip yip yip. You know, but it was so brief and it stopped. And then we'd hear these weird bird noise. It just went on all night long. And I can't believe nobody's going, well, yeah, it kept me up. <laughs> it was, well, I haven't gotten you know, to my the, turn yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, owls, the, the owls, owls. And then yeah. that really loud sound. Yes. And so I'm laying there. I'm really tired from a long, hellacious flight. Thank you, Alaska Airlines. Flight number 730 to hell. <laughs> 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 that was awful. But anyhow, um, I'm just drifting off. And I heard something... It had to have been a stick because it didn't sound thuddish like a rock, but it landed about 20 feet behind my tent, very crisp, very non mistakable And I'm like, something either fell out of a tree or was pitched at it. And I'm thinking, okay. So then I heard something, I'm not sure if it was a vocal or an utterance or whatever. So I start talking to Pat and I get up, unzip the tent, get my headlamp and start looking, which you're not supposed to do, but you know. Um, saw nothing, got back in the bed, and then I heard what Yvonne reported was the weird turkey, I or as I, I Barb just, reported. I said I knew they were coming to your bed. Yeah, but you'd heard that sound. Because the howls were first, it was like howls through behind our tents and responses for the other side. Yeah. And I, I heard your voices, I thought that's woke you up, and then the turkey noise. Okay. And then more voices, and I thought... That was me, the both times talking to Pat. If I put the all the torches on, yeah. would I be brave enough to get up to, so that I'm no on my own? Yeah. But I, was, I, could, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't give it to the tent. So when I heard that, whatever it was, weird turkey noise, elk, it was a weird sound. It was very sharp, very loud. I just did a couple of loud claps because I'm not that brave. And I got back up again with the headlamp, unzipped the tent, said, Pat, Pat, Pat trying to rouse her and she goes what and I said hey all sorts of rackets going on out here so we stop talking go back to bed and about 15 minutes later that I want to say it was a tree Sandy thinks it was a tree from what she heard I don't know what else everybody else heard but it was <laughs> And it lasted nine or ten seconds. It wasn't brief. And, you know, I've heard a few things on YouTube, and that was a tree down to me. And it might not have been a foot in diameter tree, but it was a tree. I know that. And it's off to our, I think that's north. I think that northwest. 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 Okay, so it's not too far, and we might go scout for it today. And then I heard a few other things through the night, just kind of, awake off and on and then our trip lines were broken in three sections each to the closest and right of our tents so within three feet of our tents this wow. trip line but no prints not that i could see but you know this is duff country yeah. you just yeah. don't get right. outlines or yeah. Yeah. not not good so ones i'd say that's my report that's why you find so many of us little duffers here <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so, Tom, did you have anything to share from last night? Uh, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, after the rain stopped, and some of that had been 12.30 to 1 o'clock in that range there, mm -hmm. um, just about a half hour later, so it was two between 2 and 2.15, uh, I had, was hearing them walking around the outside of the tent, and very clearly one of them spoke to the other one. Oh, okay. And the other answered back. And uh, then they just eased off after that, and I, I just grinned and went back to sleep. <laughs> okay, cool. What, what did they sound like, Tom? Sound like Sasquatch. No, but I mean, did they, <laughs> uh, but did they, was it word? Were their voices soft, or did they kind of gravelly? Or? It was kind of gravelly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you make out any words? Yeah, I weren't made out the words, but I didn't understand the words. They weren't to me, so <laughs> not something that would be, you know, it was them and their own their language. Their language, not English language. Right. Yeah, what? it was tick <laughs> and right back, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oh, I hope you got that on your yeah. Well, I yeah. got my recorder going, so if anything was going on around my tent, or was vocally hurt. But to me, if you imagine that they're trying to be quiet with their massive lungs, mm. and I have this theory, the vocal cords of most animals are triangular, and the vocal cords of lions are actually square, and that what is what helps give them their volume and their roar. Imagine these guys trying to speak quietly. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, I mean, with their lungs and their mm -hmm. capacity, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to speak quietly. Well, like, be quiet, Rob! I <laughs> can't hear you! <laughs> Gee, I've never heard that before! <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed loud. <laughs> okay, so uh, we still have Peter to hear from here, who also would like to remain off camera. So, uh, what have you experienced since you've been here? Well, I was woke up two nights ago, just briefly, at about three in the morning, <clears throat> and I realized that my toes were really cold, and and I fell out of my bunk, and did a bunch of stuff like that. But something woke me up, and then I, I walked behind my tent, and I and I did see uh, what appeared to be a large um, toe print. With it looked like a footprint, but the toe was really defined. Um, and so I figured, oh. Well, then I went and slept in my truck and warmed up and stuff like that. So I didn't really see any more on on, yeah. on Tuesday night. Uh, last night we went for a night night hike, and um, in the dark with no flashlights, right at dusk, so we could just barely see anything. And and um, I did see kind of a tan-colored, tall thing move behind a tree, and there was a, a stick break that I heard when it moved. So there was sound and movement, you know, which kind of told me that. And, and I'd been hearing stick breaks kind of paralleling us as we were walking. And so I suspected one was just kind of walking along, watching what we were doing, listening to what we had to say. And um, then about a mile down the road, we turned around. But, but just before we turned around, I looked up in a tree and I saw a blue light. And it was only there for a moment, and once I fixated on it, it disappeared. But it was very clear. I mean, there was absolutely no light out last night. There was no flashes or anything, I mean, you know, no trucks or cars coming down the road. And, and it kind of reminded me the same color blue of, of Sam's uh, blue orb, and because um, I have that picture. But it, that's what it reminded me of, and that's kind of what cued me that maybe it might have been uh, an orb. And... Um, that's basically all that. Uh, I didn't hear anything last night. That there was some people camped next to me that, I, and I slept really good and I wasn't cold. So see, I didn't wake them up. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I experienced um, started when we were most of us were still sitting here around the fire, and, and a few of you had gone for a walk. You want um, to put that on? No. <laughs> so from this direction behind us back here where we're sitting it sounded like a whoop but we were kind of talking when it happened so we didn't get a clear we didn't hear it clearly and that was followed by another one which you guys were down on the road and and you said you had done the second whoop in a response yes and we weren't sure if you guys were doing an experimental whoop and when we got back we found out it wasn't you no uh -uh. and that we did reply and then there was a third okay, one. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so after that, 
you guys got back and um, we did hear some a lot of other night sounds. And at one point back in this direction, there was an owl that went on for quite some time. And I'm pretty sure that was an owl just because it went on for so long. Right. Very consistent. Mm -hmm. And then um, after we went to bed, um, I just sat in there listening. And back in this direction, I heard a lot of, uh, a lot of sounds. There may have been some coyotes. Um, there was some howls some scream type sounds but they were distant i had turned on the recorder in the cabin or in the the tent so i'll see if i got any of that picked up but um after that i heard what the the what i thought was an elk it sounded like a cow or a calf you know that ee, ee, ee. and then i heard your clap and your your voices talking and it was after that that I heard what I t interpreted. You said a tree falling. I interpreted it as maybe a rock slide or something because, like you said, it was rumbling and crashing, and it lasted several seconds, and it was also back in this direction. And after that, I didn't really hear anything else, but not long after that was when the rain started, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to hear anything over the rain, and I was pretty tired, so I just burrowed into my sleeping bag and went to sleep, and that, that was the last thing I experienced. So is there anybody else that has any questions for anybody? Anything you'd like to throw in? I have a question uh, for your viewers. We talked about this just briefly this morning. When Yvonne and I were out here before it got light out, it was still dark. I said there was, we didn't know what the sound was, if it was a bird, but um, but remember when you were kids and you'd put your thumbs together and then blow through it like with the blade of grass? It didn't warble, but it reminded me of that whistle yeah. Um, and it was very distinct, um, and you could hear the breath behind it. And I think it was like five times the first time we heard it from over here. And then I think it went off three times. It was in movement, and then a couple of times, and then we heard it more getting distant. But it was that whistle. It was a very distinct whistle. It wasn't a bird that I'd ever heard before. So it was a nighthawk. So I have no no idea what a night hawk sounds like. I'll have to get online and, mm -hmm. and see if that's what we heard. But that's what it reminded me of, is when you put your little fingers together and blow, and okay. however they do that, and yeah, that yeah, sound. Blade of grass right yeah, now. but it doesn't you know warble or anything. It was very clear and very crisp, and we okay. heard that before it got light out this morning. Okay. Yeah. And what time were you guys up? I was up, I think, around 5, just around 5. She was up before me because the fire was popping and cracking. Yeah, I heard that all. I heard it all. Yeah. Night. I forgot yeah. to add that I woke up around 5. I'm always checking my watch. That's how I got mm -hmm. these times off on this report. But um, I want to say it was about 10 to 5, and I heard a big wood knock back that way. Mm. I heard a sharp stick crack or a branch crack or a, you know, like they whacked it on something. Mm -hmm. I heard three of these kind of reports all within seven or eight minutes mm -hmm. of each other. And I can never, you know, I speculate, but I wonder if they're rounding up the kids saying, hey, it's time to come in. Light's yeah. going to come up. Y'all need to get back here. Settle down, you know, because right. it was, they were very close together. In terms it's of kind of interesting because she and I had that same conversation, not ever hearing this whistle before. I was like, well, I wonder if they're rounding up the people or it's like they're getting up, you know. But uh, then you just start late. reading into whatever you're hearing. And if it's an actual bird or a hawk or whatever, then great. Then we know what that is. Right. But we did have that conversation because it is getting starting to get, you know, light at 6 a.m. now, just starting at 6 a.m to get light out here. And if they're rounding up the troops or telling the kids, hey, they're starting to get up and move around. Yeah. Yeah, on alert type thing. It's, I think we've heard whistles like when we've gone to bed before mm -hmm. and you hear the whistle each night, every night, mm -hmm. remember? Yeah. Uh, down in the Greenwater area. But it wasn't like that whistle. It was nothing like Not that. Not like that one. The, no. The, the, that, mm -hmm. that one's more, always usually more like a thrush type whistle. <laughs> All right. I have cool. the uh, gifting net, Yvonne. Yesterday, oh, that's change. right. Now, what about the gift stumps that we oh, found yeah. when we rode? Okay. There's a stump um, with two feathers sticking out, a rock chip, a very round domed rock chip with a small, flat, smooth pebble sitting directly on top of that. And also right over here behind Sandy's car, there is a, a stump with a small gl stick glyph right on it. There. Yes, we got pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, uh, just looked like maybe a small chunk of granite and, granite and, a, and a toy car. 
So it, which glyph, very intricate glyph. Yeah. So there's also we found this morning, um, Yvonne and I back behind my tent. There's a different stump that has a little plastic eagle, toy eagle on it. And so I was looking. Well, okay. So there's the toy car. There's the the toy eagle. Ugh. You know, there's um, it, it's. And then this is a it's very a active research area for some other people that are probably leaving gifts, and that's what we're finding. So yeah. a lot of it is human. The glyph is very interesting, but out of all of that, that's probably the only thing that's of that, interest. That's the and the feather that, that is embedded in the um, the stump. The stump. I yeah. mean, that yeah, is I mean, embedded. Is, I can't pull it out. It yeah. Is so tight in that but stump. anything else, I would say, is human. Uh, okay. Made. Well, I guess yeah. that that wraps up our morning meeting for Thursday of our Barb and Gabby camp out at Bumping Lake. And, uh... Okay, here's a Gabby shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will be sure to report anything else that happens as the day goes on. And uh, we'll have our next meeting tomorrow morning. All right, thank you, everybody. You're welcome, Barb. Woohoo!